Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Brett Bodkins, and in case you haven't seen my work before, I'm generally a landscape photographer, and I would say that probably 95% of all the work I do is all color photography, and today I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I wanted to talk about why you should consider shooting in black and white. And to be clear, today with most people shooting in digital format, everyone has the option to convert to black and white after the fact in post-processing. But that's not what I wanted to talk about today. Today I wanted to talk about taking photos with the intention of displaying in black and white and to be able to hopefully benefit from the experience. Now of course when you shoot in black and white and you take away the distraction of color, it makes other factors more prominent in your images. This forces you to concentrate more on things like contrast, shapes, and textures. So for all intents and purposes, learning to shoot in black and white will not only help you with your color photography, but will also help you to diversify your portfolio as well. So for me, the most common application of black and white is in portraiture, where you already have a very obvious subject and in street photography where it can really help eliminate distracting elements in the images. So an important point that I wanted to make is that not every image that looks good in color is going to look good in black and white. Specifically, there are a lot of colors that when rendered in black and white will render to nearly or exactly the same shade of gray. So for example, blue and green can end up nearly the same shade of gray which can be quite problematic for landscape photography, for example. In this other example, you can see that yellow and pink end up looking very similar as well. Here you can see a chart that will give you an idea of what I'm talking about. This becomes even more complex when you start looking at different shades of colors, as you can see here. So I wanted to show some examples of images I've made that do work in black and white. And what you're going to see is that it's often going to be images that are either abstract, images that have a very obvious subject, images with a lot of contrast, or images with interesting textures, shapes, or lines. Now some of the images that I have in black and white look fairly good in black and white, but I feel like they lose something compared to shooting in color. However, the opposite situation can also be true with photographers relying on color to help to distract from an otherwise problematic uh, composition or technique. Now, as a photographer, I tend to rely on color a little too much, and that's why I know to tell you. Do as I say and not as I do. All that said, shooting in digital makes black and white photography more accessible today than ever before. All right, guys, I'm going to do a quick conversion to black and white. If you're not interested in watching that, you can skip to about 8 minutes and 50 seconds. So I wanted to give you an example of a black and white conversion. Now, as you can see, this image is wildly overexposed in the field. Uh, I actually made a mistake. Sometimes if I get in too much of a hurry, I forget to check the uh, histogram or something, this could happen. Uh, but we're going to see if we can't try to fix the image a little bit. And uh, I'm going to be using Lightroom 6. However, it doesn't really matter what software you have because most likely you're going to have the uh, same type of uh, function controls and such. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to set my profile correction. And that's just going to fix any little problems with the lens and such like that. Now, this image being wildly overexposed, the main thing I'm trying to get back is my highlights. Uh, so I pull those back and it doesn't really do much of anything. So I'm going to have to actually drop the exposure by quite a lot, quite a bit, probably around two stops from the way it looks to me in the photo. So I've already dropped the highlights. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the exposure down until it gets fairly close in the sky. Now that looks to be about right here. And of course, doing that, I'm going to have to adjust the shadows for uh, bringing some texture back to the trees, uh, get the trees back up to where they need to be, something like that. Um, so now I'm going to, um, the first thing that I like to do now, I personally like to get the tone curve fairly close uh, before I do the black and white uh, conversion and adjusting black and white channels separately. So here I'm going to drop the uh, saturation down just to get a feel for the image in black and white and do a couple more uh, 
final uh, adjustments here. Now I still can't go down any further with the, with the highlights so I'm going to have to go even further here with the exposure to drop it down. And I'm, I want it somewhere right around in here. Uh, so actually two and a half stops uh, total. So here I'm going to bring the shadows back up to bring the trees uh, back a little bit and I'm going to adjust the clarity just a little bit to give some uh, texture here. That also helps with the sky of Tad as well. Um, the white point, I'm going to bring the white point up just a little bit because I wanted a little more full on white in the image and the blacks uh, just up just a tad um, they were clipping just a little bit there so that looks pretty good um, and that's pretty close to what I want so now that I've got the general uh, tone curve pretty close I'm gonna go ahead and do the black and white conversion so I'm gonna bring the saturation back I don't know if you really have to do that but I'm gonna do the black and white adjustment here now as you can see each one of the uh, colors has its own adjustment here now in the old days you, when you were shooting on film and such you had to actually use a filter to get these uh, separate channels to be able to adjust them but now with uh, digital you don't really have to do that now however uh, that said you uh, go too far with these just like any digital uh, image editing you're gonna uh, have some issues now so for example here I want the blue of the sky to come down a little bit to uh, drop the overall uh, exposure in the sky so I'm gonna go ahead and drop the blues down quite a bit um, not too far be before it starts to look pretty weird so uh, there might be a little bit of aqua in the sky as well and possibly in the uh, river but it doesn't really seem to do a whole lot here so I'm not going to drop it too far. The other uh, adjustment uh, is the trees here uh, that would be the green channel and I'm going to bring those up just a tad here and the last one uh, now there are some colors that you would imagine aren't going to be present in the image like red and orange for example but uh, if you do uh, go ahead and slide them around and get a look for uh, anything in the image that changes you'll notice that actually the rock in the foreground here uh, does have some orange and some red in the image just a little bit so uh, uh, I'm gonna drop those down just a tad so it's always good to check see here's your yellow and you wouldn't have imagined it had quite a, a whole lot of yellow in the image but when you adjust it you can see that it's actually uh, quite a bit of that in the image so it's good to uh, just kinda get a quick check on a lot of colors some of the colors you can pretty well know for sure you aren't going to find here um, so that's pretty much the full um, uh, adjustment on this image the way I want it uh, I still kinda wanna come down a little bit more to bring out some more in the clouds so I'm gonna drop it down just a tad more and then we'll bring the uh, shadows up just a little bit to uh, compensate so actually this image was wildly uh, overexposed you shouldn't have to go to uh, 2.7 uh, stops uh, to fix an image so that's not ideal and uh, you know so it's always good to get the image you know pretty correct in the camera make sure to check your histogram when you're in the field uh, try not to get carried away shooting and forget to do that sometimes alright guys the uh, typical YouTube viewer only sticks around for an average of uh, three to five minutes on any video uh, so if you stuck around this long I'm gonna assume that you really want to know a little bit more so we're going to take a quick look at the history of photography and how that helps and applies today. Now to understand why you should consider shooting black and white photography today, you have to look at the influences that the pioneers of photography bring to the table. So when you take a look back at the history of photography and you see the photos taken by the early pioneers, you can see that what once started as a technical limitation became something much more than that. Even today, all these decades later, the photos and the look can be very exciting and inspiring to photographers and sometimes even the general public. The look of black and white is timeless and immortal. There's an obvious nostalgia factor, however, I'm sure that there's also a very important aesthetic reason to shoot black and white as well. 
Now, I don't consider myself to be a very good photographer in general, but I'm definitely even more out of my element when doing black and white photography. However, I still very much enjoy doing it, and I think it can bring a lot to the table, as well as it has the potential to teach the photographer more about the photographic process. Shooting in black and white requires that you understand what will happen to colors recorded in your image as well as how the scene will render in black and white and really allows you to see the world through a different lens. In today's world with so many conflicting colors and light sources, simplifying to black and white can help eliminate many conflicts in your photo caused by factors like mixed color temperature. One of the most important reasons I suggest shooting in black and white is that it can really bring some variety into your portfolio. Just the act of switching over to black and white for a couple days or a week or a month can really bring new life into your work. It may even inspire a whole collection of images or inspire you to shoot black and white exclusively. It's all up to you and what you want out of your creative process. One of the big reasons that black and white is still so prevalent today is the fact that you can develop black and white film easily in your home. With only a couple basic tools and chemicals, you can be shooting and processing your film yourself. This makes film photography much more accessible as it can bring the cost of shooting film down tremendously. Not only is it a matter of practicality, but once you get used to seeing your images in that way, it can also be addictive. Film photography is a separate topic, and I have a video on that if you'd like to see it. Click the link here. But there is no denying its influence on black and white photography as a whole. Without getting too specific, photography started in the 1800s, but it really wasn't until the 1930s that color photography became accessible. But even then, it really wasn't accessible to everyone. This meant that entire generations of photographers at the time were still choosing black and white for their work. By the time that color photography became a real option for artists, the look of black and white had already become immortalized and people were already looking nostalgically at the works of earlier photo legends shooting in black and white. Today there are many decades of incredible work in color photography and public opinion seems to favor color. For many of us though, black and white still holds a special place in our hearts. I grew up in the color film era, however, when I got more serious about photography, most people still shot black and white for easier development at home or in the darkroom. Then when computer editing and digital technology really hit the scene, it became really easy to convert to black and white and I started to see the possibilities of shooting in color and deciding later whether a particular photo should be converted to black and white. Today I still shoot and develop black and white film from time to time and now my preferred digital workflow is to shoot in raw file format. Most cameras allow you to capture a full color raw file while still showing you a black and white preview on the camera. This can help you see and compose your images in black and white while still giving you full flexibility in post-processing. Shooting for black and white can be much different than shooting for color. Many photos that work well in color may not work well in black and white and vice versa. Using the electronic viewfinder on a mirrorless camera or the live view screen on the back of a DSLR can help tremendously. Knowing how colors will render can help a lot. However, with today's technology, you can learn as you go using the preview to help you through trial and error. All of this makes it much easier to find successful results starting out in black and white work. The skills needed in earlier black and white work will still help you tremendously, but you can take your time learning the theory while still getting good results right away. Really a best of both worlds kind of situation. For many of you, shooting in black and white may help you reconnect with your inspiration and what drew you to photography in the first place. You may find a similar comfort in the simplicity of shooting film if that's something you want to explore as well. No matter your age or background, I truly feel shooting in black and white can bring something fresh and exciting to your portfolio and to your shooting experience. I really hope you decide to give it a try. I've never really had the time to properly research historically important photographers, but I have a pretty good visual memory and it's helped me absorb many photographic works over the years. 
If you have the time, then do yourself a favor and spend some time digging through the works of others. You'll find insight and inspiration not only from the works of the photographic legends, but by their lesser known contemporaries as well. I generally do landscape photography, but enjoy seeing works in other genres as well. I've learned a lot looking through works of portraiture, street photography, fashion photography, photojournalism, and more. You may end up learning more than you expected and often from those whom you expected the least. So this is one time where simplicity really can be strength. And in black and white photography, the extra simplicity that comes through black and white uh, makes it very easy to explore different types of lighting, uh, shades, textures, contrast. It really can make a lot of things stand out. Uh, that you may have overlooked if you had color in the image. All right, guys, now I hope watching this video uh, helped you out in some way, gave you some inspiration of some sort to go out and give shooting in black and white a shot. Now feel free, if you enjoy my work, to uh, follow me not only here on YouTube, but uh, you know on basically any social media website. I have basically everything, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, you know, just pretty much everything. Uh, my name is really unique, so it's very easy to find me. Uh, if you were interested in any of these photos as prints, uh, let me know uh, if you don't see them on my website, as I typically uh, don't have all these in my portfolio. Uh, let me know if there's one that you want in particular, and I'll be able to get that uploaded for you. So definitely, I hope you took something from this, and uh, feel free to you know leave a comment in the comments below if this helped you out in some way. Uh, or if you get a more specific question that I didn't answer already earlier. All right, guys, take care and uh, see you on the next one.